On your screen is a live view of Falcon 9 awaiting its 10.13 p.m. Pacific Time launch from Slick 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Hey everyone, my name is Somia Srivastava and I'm a structures engineer here at SpaceX in Hawthorne, California. Thanks for joining us tonight for the UTILSAT OneWeb 20 mission. At T minus 10 minutes and 15 seconds, our team at Vandenberg has completed checkouts on the vehicle and the weather, range, and vehicle are all go for launch. And if for any reason we aren't able to launch tonight, a backup opportunity is available tomorrow, October 20th, with the launch window opening at 10.08 p.m. Pacific time. Our customer today is Eutelsat Group, a geo LEO operator with a fleet of 36 geostationary satellites and the OneWeb constellation of more than 600 satellites in low Earth orbit, also known as LEO, that deliver broadcast and connectivity services worldwide. Today's launch will send 20 OneWeb satellites into low, er low Earth orbit, where they will raise over the coming months to integrate into the OneWeb constellation, which orbits at its own unique LEO altitude of 1,200 kilometers above Earth and in staggered height formation to minimize any risk of collision. Today's satellites were built by Airbus, U.S. Space and Defense in Merritt, in Merritt Island, Florida. Let's check out the short video from Mutilsat to learn, to learn a bit more about today's mission. Through its multi-orbit solutions, Eutelsat delivers high-end throughput, low-latency connectivity solutions to connect businesses, communities, governments, maritime customers, aviation sectors, and more, all to meet a wide spectrum of connectivity needs. At T-minus 7 minutes and 16 seconds, let's take a moment to meet the vehicle that's taking the OneWeb satellites to orbit today. Falcon 9 is a two-stage rocket that's developed and manufactured by SpaceX, known for its safe, reliable, and cost-effective access to space. It's also the first and currently the only orbital-class rocket capable of reflight. Starting at the top of the vehicle is the payload fairing, which is a protective shell that encases the payload being sent to space. The fairing will separate and jettison away from the vehicle, exposing the payload once Falcon 9 reaches space. Continuing down the vehicle, we have the second stage. The second stage is powered by a single Merlin vacuum engine, or MVAC, which is optimized to perform in the vacuum of space. We're flying our shortened MVAC nozzle extension today, which you'll get a better view of later in today's webcast. Below that is the first stage, which contains nine engines, eight, arranged around, load is complete. eight arranged around the outside and one center engine, all of which is held in place by a structure called the OctaWeb. Each of these Merlin 1D engines delivers about 190,000 pounds of thrust at sea level, which gives Falcon 9 a combined 1.7 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. The Falcon 9 first stage is also equipped with four landing legs that deploy just before landing to allow for vertical touchdown on a drone ship or a landing pad. And today's booster will be returning to landing zone four at Vandenberg, and this will be its seventh landing.
Coming up shortly, the transporter erector, which is also known as the strong back or TE, will retract away from Falcon. The TE is the large truss structure that you see there that's right next to the rocket. And we'll first see the, clamp the clamps open up around the second stage, and then the TE will pull away from the rocket. And that should be coming up in around a minute from now. The TE is designed to transport, raise, and support Falcon 9 at the launch pad. Falcon 9, thanks. Our pressure rising for strong back retract. And we just heard that Falcon 9 is starting to Satellites pressurize. Satellites are on internal power. Strong back retract. All great callouts there. So, yes, the TE is designed to transport, raise, and support Falcon 9 at the launch pad using umbilicals or flexible lines to route the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry from the ground systems to the rocket and payload until Falcon 9 switches to internal power and clears the pad. Strong back lower has started. Good callouts there. And there we see those clamp arms opening up and pulling away from stage two. Now the clamps are fully open and the strong back is beginning to pull away from Falcon 9. So as the strong back continues to recline away from Falcon 9, at this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of rocket-grade kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Both the first stage and second stage should finish propellant loading about a minute apart from each other, with the first stage finishing up at around the T-minus 3-minute mark and the second stage finishing up around the T-minus 2-minute mark. So we should be coming up on locks load completion shortly. Stage one locks load is complete. Right on time. So in around 30 seconds, the second stage should finish up with propellant loading. And then at around T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. And that is when the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. And then just inside of T minus two seconds, we will light the M1D engines for liftoff. Stage two locks load is complete. And there we just heard that the second stage is now fully loaded with locks and now Falcon 9 is fully loaded with propellant. Ground gas close up. So weather is still looking green and the range is ready to support our T0 of 10.13 p.m. Pacific time. And with that, we are proceeding into the last few minutes of terminal count. Falcon 9 is in startup. And there you just heard that call out for Falcon 9 in startup, which means that the internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. The launch director will be giving... LD is go for launch. The launch director has given the final go for launch. So at T minus 37 seconds, all systems are go for the launch of Falcon 9. T minus 30 seconds. T 
T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. And lift off the Falcon 9, go 1 Web 4. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage one propulsion is nominal. So at T plus 33 seconds, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Slick 4E at Vandenberg, carrying the 20 Eutelsat OneWeb satellites. During ascent, we tilt or gimbal the engines to turn the rocket horizontally into what we call Our a gravity turn nominal. to put the rocket on its path to orbit. And moments ago, we throttle the engines down in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure, is supersonic. which is coming up in a few seconds. Max Q. So we just had max Q, and the rocket typically needs to go 28,000 kilometers per hour, or about 17,500 miles per hour, horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth by gravity and get into orbit. Now we have five and events. Kill. Now we have five events coming up in quick succession: Miko stage set, SES one, and boost back burn, which starts bringing the first stage back to the launch site, and then fairing deployment when the fairing halves will separate from the second stage. So we have Miko in about 30 seconds from now. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Stage one boost back startup. And there you heard and maybe even saw Miko, stage sep, SES-1, and the start of boost back burn, which will last for just under one minute. We have some really awesome views on screen right now. And coming up next, we have fairing separation, which is in a few seconds. Fairing separation confirmed. And as you just heard and can see right there, we had confirmation of successful separation of both fairing halves from the second stage. Both of the fairing halves on today's mission are flight proven with one half flying for its 11th time and the other for its 13th. We will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again today once they fall back to earth using our recovery vessel Go Beyond. Stage one boost back shutdown. And so we just heard the call out for a successful end of the boost back burn. And the first stage booster is now flying back to Vandenberg Space Force Base for a landing on landing zone four, which is just 1,400 feet away from the launch pad where it took off. It's now T plus four minutes and 17 seconds into today's mission, and we're currently in the first of two planned MVAC burns before satellite deployment. Just over six minutes into flight, you should see the start of our first stage's entry burn. And for the entry burn, we relight three M1D engines, engines one, five, and nine, which slow down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. And we slow down to reduce reentry forces, which helps us recover and reuse the first stage. 
During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but we're still moving really fast. And this causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume, and that deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle surface. And that soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 burns. The Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and reentry. The MVAC engine is optimized for 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum, and on your screen you'll notice a you'll notice a shorter nozzle that's attached to the Merlin vacuum engine. And our teams use a shorter nozzle when we don't need as much performance to get the payload to its final destination. But we still fly full-size MVAC nozzle. MVAC nozzles on missions that require a more significant amount of thrust from stage two or ones that contain a heavier payload. Entry burn is going to come up shortly and so we should be able to see that on stage one when the engines relight. Stage one entry burn startup. So entry burn has just begun. Stage one entry burn shutdown. And we just had a good call out for entry burn shutdown. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investment in critical scientific research. And the Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission just performed that entry burn for its seventh time. And this booster has previously supported the USS F-62 mission, as well as five Starlink missions. We're now waiting for the first stage to land at landing zone four. Stage one FTS has saved. Stage one transonic. Good call outs there where Falcon 9 is slowing. The stage one is slowing down. Landing burn should be coming up shortly. Stage one landing burn. And there we have Stage a landing burn where guidance. engine 9 has relit right before touching down on the landings at landing zone 4. Stage 1, landing leg deploy. Stage 1, landing confirmed. And there you have it, that landing Stage marks SpaceX's 357th recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. And we are now waiting for second engine cutoff, which is coming up next. Nominal orbital insertion. And we just had Seco 1 and good confirmation of nominal orbital insertion. So the second stage is now embarking on its coast phase, which we're going to take a short break for. And after the coast phase, we will relight that MVEC engine for a second time around the T plus 55 minute mark, and that will be followed by payload deploy. So we'll see you back here in about 45 minutes.
Welcome back to the Eurosat OneWeb 20 mission. We've had a great mission so far. Falcon 9 launched on time at 10.13 p.m. Pacific time from Slick for East in Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. We had a successful ascent, fairing separation, and second stage orbital insertion. We also recovered the first stage at landing zone 4, which marked its seventh landing. So we're now seconds away from a second ignition of the MVAC, which will carry the second stage and the OneWeb payload into the orbit necessary to deploy the satellites. This burn will be quick, and it's only going to last a couple of seconds. And it's coming up in about 15 seconds from now. Good orbit insertion. And there was a good call out there for good orbit. And as a reminder, the 21 web satellites are still attached to Falcon 9 second stage. Coming up at about T plus 59 minutes is the start of the payload deploy sequence, which should take a little less than 20 minutes to complete. So we'll be listening for the start of those call outs in a few minutes. So now we're just a couple of minutes away from payload deploy, and our initial burn and orbit insertion put us into an elliptical orbit, which is one where the highest point, the apogee, and the lowest point, the perigee of the orbit, are different. And so it put us into a 175 kilometer by 600 kilometer orbit. And that last short burn that we just saw put us into a circular orbit for payload deployment into a 600 kilometer by 600 kilometer orbit. So it turns out from orbital mechanics that a burn along the direction of travel raises the opposite side of the ellipse, which is why we took that burn at apogee to raise the perigee. So now that we've completed both of those burns today, we are now just a few minutes away from the first payload deploy where we will be deploying 10 of the satellites. And then we'll be taking a short break and come back for the final 10 satellites on this payload. As a reminder, our customer today is Eutelsat Group, which operates a fleet of 35 geostationary satellites and a constellation of more than 600 satellites in low Earth, low Earth orbit to deliver broadcast and connectivity services worldwide. The 21 Web LEO satellites launching today were built by Airbus US Space and Defense in Merritt Island, Florida. And once deployed, they will continue to raise their orbit over the coming months and will be integrated into the OneWeb LEO constellation. So we should start seeing deployment of the first 20 Eutelsat of the of the first 10 of the 20 Eutelsat OneWeb satellites in the next few seconds here.
SAT A4 and A8 have been deployed. So we just had deployment of the first two satellites of this batch of 10. And the next two will be deployed about in about 30 seconds from now. SAT A3 and A7 have been deployed. Good call out there for the next pair that have just deployed. So, so far we have deployed four out of the 10 satellites in this first payload deployment, and we're waiting Sat for- A2 and A6 have been deployed. And there we just heard the next pair have been deployed, so there's four more remaining. SAT A1 and SAT A5 have been deployed. Another good call out there. So there are two more satellites that remain to be deployed in this initial set of 10. They should be deploying in about, in about a minute. SAT B4 and B8 have been deployed. And great callouts there. So we've now deployed 10 out of the 20 satellites, and we now have a second, roughly 10 minute coast phase, which we're going to take another short break for. And after the coast phase, we'll be back to deploy the remaining 10 satellites just after the T plus one hour and 12 minute mark. So we'll see you back here in about 10 minutes.
Welcome back to the final portion of the Eutelsat OneWeb 20 mission. So far, we have had a great mission with an on-time launch of Falcon 9 at 10.13 p.m. Pacific time from Slick 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. We had a successful ascent, fairing separation, and second stage orbital insertion. And we also recovered the first stage at landing zone 4 for its seventh landing. And about 10 minutes ago, we deployed the first 10 satellites on today's mission. And now we are about to start deploying the last 10. And similar to the first set of deployments, these will be deployed in pairs. So even though we don't have views of satellite of satellite deployment yet, we will still get confirmation over the nets until we regain camera views. So we are currently standing by for those callouts and we will we will share them as soon as we hear them. We should be coming up on signal acquisition shortly. Sat B1 and B5 separation confirmed. Good call outs there for the first two of this batch of 10. 
Sat B2 and B6 separation confirmed. And a great view of those of that pair deploying. So so far we've now deployed a total of 14 of the 20 satellites aboard today's mission. We have an awesome view on our screen right now, but even if we lose views of satellite deployment, we will still continue to get confirmation. Sat C1 and C5 separation confirmed. And another two have deployed, and we got an awesome view of that deployment as well. So now there are four more satellites that remain to be deployed. And we have successfully deployed 16 out of the 20 so far. The satellites that you see on your screen right now were built by that B3 and B7 separation confirmed. Another successful deployment of two more satellites. These satellites were built by Airbus US Space and Defense in Merritt Island, Florida. And so now there are the final two satellites that remain to be deployed from the set of 20. Sat C3 and C7, separation confirmed. So with the final two on their way, we can confirm successful deployment. deployed. We can now confirm successful deployment of all 20 spacecraft on today's mission. And that wraps up our coverage for today. Today's launch concludes our 99th successful launch this year and our 394th overall. All of us here at SpaceX want to give a huge thanks to our customer, Eutelsat Group, for entrusting us with today's mission. We also want to thank the Range and the Federal Aviation Administration for their support. Be sure to follow us at SpaceX on X for upcoming launch updates. And to all of our viewers, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again soon.